everybody, it's Wednesday, and this Patreon show tune thing has become a thing. Patrons are now sending me jingles through Patreon messages to sing. So Kraken, one of the patrons, has provided today's Patreon show tune jingle. So here we go. Okay, ready? Join the Patreon. Offer your support. Everyone will think that you're a right good sport. Everybody loves a member. Everyone enjoys the chat. Only costs a couple bucks. How can you ask for more than that? Patreon.com slash Leanna K. That was a good one. All right. So other patrons out there, patrons get to nominate songs. That's what we'll do. That was obviously Master of the House from Les Miserables. This is fun. This is fun. All right. So, <laughs> so uh, I should just stop there. That was awesome. Um, but uh, no. I, I promised I'd talk about Thinky Thinkies, more more stuff there, and uh, I if you watch Twitch yesterday, I was playing more Death Stranding, uh, confusing some people, thrilling others, apparently did a really good job clearing one BT area um, by using a ladder. Um, I'm enjoying it a lot, but one of the things it did, and excuse me, my lips are really chapped, I should have done this before we started. Um, but, uh, and I feel like food on my face or something like that. I like scarfed really quick between Twitch and now. So yeah, it looks like my eh, teeth are a little bit something, but anyway, hot mess, but good ideas. Um, but when I only had two examples before, I couldn't really put it together, but now I'm thinking there's something with Hideo Kojima's female character design. And it's actually very interesting. Oh, I just lost my monitor. Why did that happen? Oh, no. There we go. Okay, it's back. Um, but uh, so in Metal Gear 3, we had the boss, who was also known as the Joy. Then we had Quiet in Metal Gear 5. Now we have Fragile in Death Stranding. Now we have a pattern that Hideo Kojima takes characters and gives them names based on traditionally female virtues, right? A good woman is, spreads joy, you know, always happy, always there to support. Uh, obviously the boss was not that. Uh, then there was, you know, women should be quiet, you know, quiet, docile, oh, but you know, quiet's a pretty badass sharpshooter with a pretty intense backstory. Um, and now we have Fragile, who is clearly anything but. And when when something happens this often, that's not an accident. And if we think about how kind of very rigid uh, gender roles are in Japanese society compared to what goes on in Japanese art, I think this is actually quite a statement that the Japanese are being subversive about, oh, we're going to play along in the real world, but through our art, we're going to make it clear what, what we really like, which is, you know, more women who are, are well-rounded people and interesting and, and not women that are just sort of a collection of desirable traits. Um, and I think that's really interesting because, you know, obviously in um, Hideo Kojima has a thing for Dutch actresses. Um, that That particular, like, not like attractive, but not flawless looking, not overly made up. His his faces on women are women who look like they've lived a bit, you know, like e even though they're all like very attractive, they look like they've seen some strife in their life instead of being like totally smooth face, which is always nice when it happens because obviously, you know, um, all of Kojima's characters are very idealized physically. And it's not just the women. And this is why I give him a pass. I mean, it's not just, you know, the guys are pug ugly with beer guts and the women are all flawless looking. Um, there's a lot of focus on butts, Norman Reedus's butt, uh, a, a Twitch uh, chatter pointed out that if you stare, if you zoom the camera in on Norman Reedus's crotch in the private rooms, he actually gets uncomfortable and eventually gives you the finger. It's like a, it's a really cool little moment. Um, so he's spreading it around. It's just, it's, 
He's making an American style action movie with a Japanese flair, or in this case, more like an action series. I think the choice of Norman Reedus makes, makes sense because Death Stranding very much feels like a premium cable concept. I hope that if, if Hideo Kojima does decide to take a plunge into linear media, he'll consider premium, a premium cable show or like a, um, like a Netflix streaming series as opposed to a movie because that's the actor's medium now. And so, you know, with Norman Reedus there and Guillermo del Toro there and Mads Mikkelsen there. Um, and then you got Lindsay Wagner, who I think is so cool because she was the bionic woman. Uh, but just based on the cast, it, it is very much like playing this premium cable show. And that's why what he's doing with women is so cool. And why I'm like, I'd really enjoy him... Um, uh, taking the plunge into like a, a streaming series or something like that, because I find a lot of the time, and obviously there are exceptions to this, but a lot of the time on premium cable, female characters as written aren't, <coughs> excuse me, terribly interesting. Wonderful performances lift the character. And by like season two or three, they become more interesting because the actors are like, oh yeah, sorry, the, the, the writers are like, oh yeah, we should do more of that. They don't quite get it, but really great performances save the parts. And like I said, there are, there are exceptions. With a character like, um, with the misdirection that Kojima does, those would be really great parts for the actresses who play them. I mean, they already are. You know, every actress who's who's played uh, a Hideo Kojima character has has defended the role strongly against criticism. And I, I think the criticism is kind of unfair because Hideo Kojima is not creating sexist assumptions about women. He's using them to leverage expectations and allow his female characters to triumph over them, if not, you know, um, in body than certainly in spirit. I mean, all the crap, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna spoil it because I, I hope people go in and play through these games or you can watch Death Stranding on Twitch. Um, but, you know, the adversity these women go through, the, the, the stuff they've had to weather to, to, um, um, survive, if not overcome, it's done in a different way, right? Like it's it's not the Game of Thrones style. Well, th this is a patriarchy, so so all women go through this, and some are just stronger than others. The the women in uh, Hideo Kojima stuff, um, they're exceptional. They're not well. This is an example of what this world does to women. They are exceptional individual larger than life characters and we desperately need more of that instead of create male creators and it, it's it's male creators that do this i've been in rooms where it's happened that's no slight to guys not all male creators do this i have never seen a female creator make this mistake they do it in reverse right um, you look at sort of a female created thing and, and some of the men are sometimes not well developed. They're just, oh, he's perfect. Like look at Edward Cullen in Twilight, right? I'm not saying that men only do this, but you know, I've been in so many rooms. Wow. That was a lot of, that was a lot of caveats. Hopefully you know what I mean, but I've been in a lot of writer's rooms where you see a guy pitch the male lead and then the friend. And then, you know, all these male characters, and then they get to the girl. And it's always the wife or the girlfriend or the love interest. Okay, what's, what's her story? And it tends to be very half-baked. Oh, well, she's his ex-wife, or she doesn't understand what he's doing. Or the, the amount of development for the male characters is like this. And the amount of development for the female characters are like this. And they tend to just be um, significant other as antagonist or significant other as support character or, you know, love interest as eventual significant other. There's no soul. There, there's no intrinsic 
the creator is a part of this character. And I've had fights where I've said, I, she has to be more than that if she's a well-rounded character. If she's just the girlfriend, that's lazy writing. And oh man, do people get defensive, right? And I find that they get more defensive in that particular character than if you point out, say, okay, this boss character, there's not enough there. Do we really need it? You know, they get really defensive when it's the female character. And I get it. A guy is trying to create his dream girl and fulfill all those, those fantasies and all that stuff. And that's not inherently evil. That can come from a very pure place. But this is why there has to be sort of a, a shared um, uh, creative thing going on because looking at it from the other side like there's a reason that characters like edward cullen make men gag make everybody gag makes me gag right just no guys actually like that you know it's a terribly written character not that any character in twilight is terribly well written but you know what i mean um it's uh it, it just i'm not saying it's something only guys do it's just there's more men in positions to create these things Hideo Kojima is an example of a guy who does not do that. The, the, these women have very, very extensive backstories. They are, they are unique in their individual games, but also to each other. Yes, you could say there are similarities in that they're all, you know, white women, but, you know, they're very different in their motivations, in where they come from, in what's driving them. Um, and that's not nothing. Like, that's the sign of a creator who, and, and they tend not to just, they tend to have roles in the structure of the game, not just, oh, she's the girlfriend, oh, she's the wife. You know, there, there are characters like that. Like, the, the Lindsay Wagner character, yeah, it's the mom, the sister, but that's fulfilling the, you know, almost the Virgin Mary type, the, the angelic character um that's a you know a, a misdirect in its own way too um but you know he creates a character for that but then he creates another character who's got a purpose beyond that and his naming conventions just tell me that he is being very subversive in that way because he's he's not afraid of you know um, dehumanizing and objectifying men alongside the women. Um, I, I don't know what, you know, fount of knowledge he's tapping into. I don't know what secret sauce he's got, but I want to praise that because I'd like to see more of that in game design. You don't have to be deliberately provocative and subversive if you don't want people to go crazy, but he's clearly thought out these female characters as people. Um, it ain't that hard. And he continues to do it even though he gets no credit for it, which is an indication that this is something very important to him. And he doesn't talk about it a lot. And I think it's just because as a creator, he's like, all my characters, I want them to be good characters. I'm not saying he said this. I'm saying this is my, my interpretation of how they look on the page. Um, he doesn't treat female characters as a... You know, oh, we have to be extra careful here. He just treats them with the same respect as he does his male characters. And I think the fact that Death Stranding is not in that Metal Gear wheelhouse now, we've actually been able to see um, how he does it when it's not that extremely kind of militarized world, you know? Um, and I just... I don't expect anybody else is going to give him credit for that because, you know, they're not going to be able to see past the the visible thongs and, you know, the butt shots and all that stuff. But it's definitely there. And for what it's worth, I don't have a problem with, you know, Lindsay Wagner's dress being kind of clingy and uh, Fred, what's what's her name? Am Emily? Emily. That's the character's name. Um, And, uh, you know, Fragile having very, very, like, hot, like tight, clingy pants and thick thighs because the men are depicted and treated in the same way. 
you know, you see so much of Norman Reedus' ass. And as long as it's equal, there's no problems, right? There's no problem. It's equal. You shouldn't have to drain all the sexy out of something, all the nudity out of something, even all the dehumanization out of something, because that is a major theme in Death Stranding and Metal Gear. That was one of the things I'm, I'm doing much better with it in Death Stranding than I was in Metal Gear for particular personal reasons. Um, maybe I've just gotten more immune to it as time's gone on. Um, but uh, it, it, it's, it's there and it's, it, there's clearly an element of deliberateness. Maybe there's an element of sort of, it's so internal he doesn't think about it, that's just how he creates characters. But can we please have more characters like this? It's an example of, you know, Quiet became very popular with cosplayers. There's a reason for that. Because people just didn't go, oh wow, that's sexy, that's hot, whatever, men are gonna like me, no. They, they connected to her story and, and her motivations and the, the strength and the sort of tragedy of her. And the other thing I like about Hideo Kojima is he clearly makes his women very strong, very, very strong, very, very distinct. And yet he doesn't feel the need to completely defeminize them but he's also not making them into like these superheroes, you know, these sort of perfected, you know, the, the big hair and the big heels and all that stuff. He's, he's creating characters that actually, are they idealized? Yes. Could they happen? Yeah. I mean, these worlds are so elaborate as is, that's kind of a moot point, but they are relatable. They are, you can connect to them. If you play through the game, you know, all the characters unveil very, very slowly, but you don't feel like it's just a character who's a quest giver, who's basically a plot device that, you know, that's all they're there for. They're well-rounded characters. And I promise I'll talk about, I'll stop talking about Death Stranding eventually. It's just, it's such a, I understand it's picking up a few Game of the Year nods, it's it's well deserved in a year where there has been a lot of pap and a lot of um uh a lot of pushbacks too a lot of delays but a lot of games that just played it extremely safe or just sort of failed to launch anthem <clears throat> um you know or or relied on a very cartoonish you know roster type thing where the characters are more just um, skins that, that talk and do two kind of cool emotes. It's nice to see a, 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 um, like a film festival game for, for lack of a better term, like something that's very much an auteur thing that works. And, uh, it, it's one of those things where it could have been such a mess. It could have failed so horribly. And they put this game together so fast. The, the man is just, he knows what he's doing. And, you know, kudos to Sony, kudos to, to PlayStation for just taking the project and letting him make it. Because we can really see what he does without interference. He works quick. The, the, the product is quality for what it is. It's certainly not for everyone. But that's the thing. It's also not for every, everyone. He had a vision and he had an intent and he did it. And it's creepy and it's awkward in places and it freaks you out and it's unnerving and it's so good, you know? So that's just, I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll figure something else to talk about next week. But uh, I, ju I just wanted to be super duper positive because I think we need more of that in gaming when a creator just really knocks it out of the park. All right. Should I do the, should I do the song again? Should I do Kraken song? Okay, here we go, ready? Join the Patreon, offer your support. Everyone will think that you're a right good sport. Everybody loves a member. Everyone enjoys the chat. Only costs a couple bucks. How can you ask for more than that? Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching.